we will begin the story of St. Ephraim of Namakri from its ending, the miraculous finding of his holy relics. This is Gerontisa, or Elderess, Makaria de Cipri. She was born in 1911 and died in 1999. For us, the most notable event of her life is a series of dreams she started to have in the 1950s. She restored an ancient monastery of the Annunciation near Namakri in Greece and started living there as a hermit. Knowing that the monastery was raided in the past by Ottoman pirates, she wondered what fate befell those monks living there where she made her abode, and she prayed to God that she might find their relics. At one point she heard a voice telling her to dig at a specific spot. She asked a workman to dig there, but he refused, wishing to dig elsewhere. However, he was unable to break the rock whenever he tried to dig, so, at long last, he obeyed the nun. He found a set of human bones. Dismissing the workmen, Mother Makaria dug further, finding the bones in the rest son of a monk. She left them there overnight and proceeded to read the Vespers service. During the reading, she heard a male voice tell her, How long do you plan on leaving me there? She turned and saw a bearded monk. In his left hand he carried a bright flame. He blessed her with his right hand. She apologized and said that she will take care of him first thing in the morning. He disappeared and, as the dawn broke, she immediately washed his relics, placed them in a reliquary which she put in a niche next to the altar, lighting a candle before them. That night St. Ephraim appeared to her in a dream to thank her for her devotion, and he revealed to her his name and the details of his life. St. Ephraim was born in 1384, and his worldly name was Constantinos. His father died when Ephraim was quite young, and his mother had to take care of eight children all alone. When he turned 14, St. Ephraim was tonsured a monk in the local Annunciation Monastery on the slopes of Mount Anamamon. In 1424, the monastery was raided and destroyed by Ottoman pirates. St. Ephraim was away to pray in a cave and was the sole survivor of the raid. He lived amidst the ruins of the monastery as a hermit for another year, but the Ottoman pirates struck again. They imprisoned the saint and tortured him for six months, letting his wounds heal before they would torment him further. Finally, they hung him on a mulberry tree, and one of the pirates pierced him with a hot iron rod, killing him. Sixty years after the discovery of his relics and the many miracles that occurred at his tomb, he was canonized by the Ecumenical Patriarchate and soon after by the Moscow Patriarchate. He has the title of a Neomartyr, or a New Martyr, and is famed for being a great miracle worker, especially to those who suffer from addictions. The monastery at Namakri constantly receives new testimonies of his intercession. As for the flame, what is that flame that the saint is depicted with on icons, and with which he appears in dreams? It is the uncreated light of Christ that illumines all men. The flame of his hand is the same as the halo that crowns his head. Saint Ephraim never cease to pray unto Christ our God for us. Fill our hearts with his holy flame, that we may never depart from him, and grant us at least an ounce of that courage that made you suffer for his holy name. Amen. Not all Ottomans are villains in the lives of the saints. Watch this video on Saint Ahmed the Calligrapher to see how a scribe of the Turkish Sultan converted after his slave wife attended church, and watch this video on Saint John the Russian who had wrought a miracle during his master's pilgrimage to Mecca. Bye!